Hello there, Curvis. We've made it a year. A year. I can't even believe this podcast has been alive for a year already. This is crazy to me. This is Jemmy from Flintstone Media, your host and producer of Curve the Cube, and I am so grateful, so grateful to have made it this far, and I'm so looking forward to everything that's coming in the future for this podcast. So I just want to say a big, big, big thank you to all of my listeners, um, new and old, the ones who started with me from the very beginning and the ones who are just just coming on board. Thank you to all of you. You've really helped this podcast grow. And thank you to everyone who follows Curve the Cube on social media. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and now on YouTube. So follow, like, subscribe, and uh, on YouTube in particular, uh, please uh, be sure to leave comments um, for feedback. That way we get higher up in those rankings that are so important. Um, but thank you. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you to my friends, to my family for everyone's support. In particular, I want to thank you. Th- say thank you to my sponsors. Uh, we have let's see, Little Smiles, the Pizza Girls, No Hard Feelings Tattoo Shop, Soul Experiences, and uh, our newest sponsor, Janice Massey Salon. Uh, look them all up. You can go to Curve the Cube onto our sponsor page and find links and all their info. Um, to find all our great sponsors. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of them for supporting and continuing to support us. And if you're interested in becoming a sponsor, all that info is right there on the website as well. Thank you also. A big thanks to um, two friends in particular who have really been amazing cheerleaders for me. Uh, my pod squad, Scotty Fusion and Jason Tron. Uh, they've been such such wonderful assets for me so thank you to them look for their individual episodes um they have great episodes super funny super great guys along with our pod squad episodes which we were continuing to deliver to you so far we have two episodes out one about the 80s was super fun and one to get you in the halloween spirits all spooky and stuff so all about halloween so go find that one as well and um just so just a big thank you to everyone because this podcast wouldn't happen without, I mean, it takes serious blood, sweat, and tears from myself, but it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't be a podcast without my listeners and my sponsors and my friends and just the incredible support that I've had. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I want to encourage everyone to catch up with old episodes on uh, on all kinds of places. Let's see. Uh, well, CurveTheCube.com, obviously. On Stitcher, Player FM, Libsyn, on iTunes and on the TuneIn app, uh, wherever you can find it. Catch up on old episodes because the whole point of this podcast is to inspire people to pursue your passions and your dreams and every episode aims to do that just that with um, some incredible guests. So don't miss any of them. Catch up, catch up, catch up. And in fact, um, in the episode that, that is featured today, this anniversary episode, I reference a previous episode that I really want to encourage everyone to go back and listen to in particular. It's episode number 33 with my friend Drew, um, who really goes into the realities and struggles of transgender life. So go find episode 33 with my friend Drew. In this episode, episode number 47, my anniversary episode, I still, I still can't even believe that this even happened to me this morning. I'm just flabbergasted and still beside myself, but um, uh, it's with Congresswoman Lois Frankel, who has been just such a wonderful advocate for the common man. She has been a fighter for people's rights, for equal rights, for equality, for justice, um, forever, for decades. She's been doing this. She's been in public service for so long she's 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 done um she was in the florida house of representatives she was mayor of west palm beach and now she's representing florida district 22 in the u.s house of representatives and she's just an incredible woman incredible congresswoman and i'm just so thankful that she took the time to sit down with me and she goes into where her passions come from and she almost brought me to tears a couple of times she's just that inspirational and that incredible and i'm so proud and honored to have been able to have her on on not just the podcast in general, but to have her on in particular on um, my my anniversary episode. It was just I'm I still can't even believe that this happened to me. I think I even I even said you go girl at one point in the, in the episode because I'm such a dork and I just was completely as I said to her 
Um, you know, I may have seemed calm, cool, and collected on the outside, but on the inside, it was completely spazzing out. I was so happy to have been there. So, um, her passion for, for, for what she does is just innate, and it, it spills over, and you're going to hear it um, come through the speakers on this podcast because she's just incredible. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I cannot say enough. Um, and this podcast is sponsored by a charity that is near and dear to my heart and also near, near and dear to hers, uh, Little Smiles. You've heard me talk about them on previous podcasts, but I just can't say enough. Little Smiles does so much great work for kids in the community who need extra help, whether it's you know their house burned down and all their Christmas presents were lost, or if um, they're struggling and they need uh, something, a piece of equipment or a special iPad for physical therapy, or they're sick in the hospital and they just need someone to come and visit and little smiles just steps up in such amazing ways so go to little smiles.org please i implore you donate donate do, donate um in particular not that there's anything wrong with the other chapters but i like to sp- pay special attention to the florida chapters also because they're always cool events going on you can donate directly or you can attend an event and that uh, those are always great fundraisers for the charity so um i'm gonna stop blabbing now because i'm uh, I just really want you guys to be uh, tuned into this episode, episode number 47, and I still can't believe I'm saying it, but with Congresswoman Lois Frankel, this is Jemmy with Curve the Cube. Enjoy. Curve the Cube will now initiate. Wow, there she is. <laughs> Hi, it's so, it's okay, what's your name? Jemmy. Hi, Jemmy. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you. How are you today? So what are you doing, Jemmy? Oh, this is just an interview to inspire people to uh, live their passions and dreams. Oh, wonderful. I think you're doing a great job. Do you work for a, are you a a spontaneous Person, <laughs> pretty much. Or, or, or <laughs> pretty much. I started this podcast project about it oh, exactly a year ago tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So you are my anniversary guest. Thank oh, you, I thank you, thank you very much. So this is extremely, extremely exciting for me. Yeah, let's see. Do you need light or what do you need? Uh, no, I just need um, wherever you're comfortable. Okay, you want to set a table? Or sure, you're... it's okay. up to you. I think that's completely up to you. So, where? You have to, like, set yourself up, right? Well, I just have two recorders. It's a very simple operation. <laughs> so wherever you feel comfortable. Listen, I think this is good. Okay. Okay, this, good. Is this a video or a recording? Just a recording. audio. Just okay, straight audio. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, I, they sent me your questions. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, look at that. So I'm semi-prepared. We're all prepared. <laughs> they weren't hard questions. <laughs> But I wanted to think about it before you. Right, understandable, understandable. Yeah, this is such an honor. I've, I've um, you know, personally had the pleasure of voting for you. And so... Um, Where do you live? Well, I live in Boynton now, but oh. so, you know, so I've had, yeah, I'm in your district, and yeah. I was very excited to, well, not check the box, but mark the line for so your sweet. name. Very sweet. So this yeah, has yeah. been something I'm really looking forward to, so oh, thank you, you so much. Oh, you got a picture of Je- Je- Jemmy. Jemmy. That's yeah. a sweet name. Oh, where thank you, go, you. Where did you go to high school? I went to Pinecrest in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, so you were, you were a Broward girl. Uh, well, I lived in Boca. You did, uh-huh. So we uh, commuted. <laughs> no, commuted. And then where'd you go? Are you, are you like, still? I, I can't tell your age at all. Oh, no one ever can. <laughs> I have no idea. Are you in college? You, no, I, I graduated college get this in 2001 I'm 36 wow you know you're the same age. my son's 37 oh really where did you go to school I went to Tulane he went to the he went to University of Man I don't know University of Florida <laughs> he killed me for, <laughs> no, no, you're, not, you're about to start a rivalry with your son <laughs> he was a gator oh my gosh Oh my gosh, so yeah, so let's dive in because I know that your time is precious. Yeah, go um, I, I wanted to say, when did your passion for public service first begin? Oh boy, okay, well, I will say this. Um, I can think of two points. Mm-hmm. It goes back to the 60s. Okay. I, like so many of my generation, I was inspired by John Kennedy when he said, ask not what you can do for yourself, what you do for your country. Mm-hmm. I think that rings out in my entire my generation yes uh but i really think i got the uh more of the impetus i mean as i got older when i was in college i was really i say i'm a product of the 60s i was in college during the vietnam war Mm -hmm. 
uh, civil rights movement, mm -hmm. women's rights movement. Mm -hmm. So I was a student activist. Mm -hmm. I was involved in a lot of protests, a lot. Okay. And I basically protested myself out. I mean, when I, when, when I, when I left college, I said, well, I'm, I really said, you know, one day, I didn't know when, I would try to make changes from inside the mm -hmm. establishment mm -hmm. rather than just protest in the establishment. I guess, um, in a lot of ways, I became a protester within the establishment. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's really was where I started. Well, you're, you're not um, the quote-unquote typical politician. You've always been extremely approachable and, um, you know, just having you when you were ma mayor down here and... and Did and I give you a cookie? No, no, I didn't get a cookie. Because, you know, every, <laughs> once a month on Sunday, most of my favorite event, we'd have Sunday at the Mire or Sunday on the waterfront, we'd have musical groups. Mm -hmm. And I would get, uh, I'd walk around with a basket of cookies or brownies and I would give everyone a cookie or a brownie. <laughs> to this day, I get stopped all over the county asking, people say to me, Where's my cookie? Oh, no. <laughs> no, for me, I think the first time I realized how, you know, for lack of a better word, cool you were was um, when... <laughs> I doubt my son would say that. <laughs> your interactions with, with the KVJ show and Jason's oh, messed yeah, up right. attempt to toilet paper your yeah. house. So that, you know... I think, I think my neighbor moved after that. <laughs> I love Jason. I can tell you some things that... J Jason and I have a history of... Let's see, we were in a... Uh, a basketball shooting? No, a football, uh, a kick, uh, where you kick uh, the football through the goal. Gotcha, gotcha. We a, a field kick. A field, field kick, kick, yeah. Contest, I think we were in a, we swung from the trapeze and the, yes. and the other, what other things? Then, but he, he, he sent me off my last week as mayor. Uh -huh. He came and did a um, strip tease. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm one of my. I uh, apologize. I'm one, I'm as one a my, human, <laughs> one of my assistants was the subject, and it was it was funny. Oh, that's hysterical! Very, that's hysterical. So I'm you know, glad they're back in town. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. So, but lose, losing you, for lack of a better word, losing you from the mayorship to you know, it was kind of bittersweet. Oh, um, you know, you because, didn't lose me. I know. But <laughs> um, so what was it like that first time you walked into the halls of Congress and and were in that forum? What was I can imagine what that must have felt like. It's still sometimes, you know, I sit there with uh, my friends, uh, a lot of times we'll sit together and we'll just say, you know, can you believe we're here? Because, you know, you, you do, I, you know, I remember so many times I watched the State of the Union on television. Mm -hmm, I really mm -hmm. never thought that I was going to, you know, I, I, maybe as a young person, I did dream of it. That as idealistic. I got, as I got yeah. older, I didn't think it would happen. Um, it was just fortuitous, really. Just you have to be in the right place at the right time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, and and work hard. But it is. It's still, even though it is, become recently very dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. I th we will get back on track. Mm -hmm. There's so much opportunity to do good for people. Mm -hmm. It is still, you know, in my mind, the greatest democracy in the world, mm -hmm. the most powerful government in the world. So when you sit there. And you sit in awe. Right, right. What would you, if you could encapsulate what makes Florida such a unique, because we're such a diverse yes. community from the Keys on up through the Panhandle. I mean, there's so many different types of people and, and, and places to see. How is that of a, of a challenge? Is that a challenge when you're trying to represent such a diverse group of people and, 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 and into the halls of Congress where yeah. everybody... Sometimes it seems as an outsider that people kind of want to pigeonhole Americans into one thing mm -hmm. or want us to become one right, thing, but right. we are just diverse. We yes. fight to be who we are. H how is that a challenge? I know that you, you support a diverse you know, mm -hmm. platform. You support LGBT rights mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So what is it like to try to go up and bump up against the, the establishment right. that wants to maybe to make everyone conform into one type of thing. Well, I mean, you hit, when you said, I think what makes Florida so special is our diversity. Mm -hmm. I heard a speaker, a, uh, one of the diplomats from India speak the other night, mm -hmm. and I, he really put it the best. He said something like, 
What makes har harmony is the diversity, not the sameness. It's when you put the different, if you can put the different diverse pieces together in the right way, mm -hmm. you have a very beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, and that's really what I, I think we should be about, is our diversity. And you know, even though, yeah, we may have dif different ethnic backgrounds and mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. look a little different and we speak a little different, there is much more commonness in humanity, I believe, than differenceness. I agree. You know, with the exception of uh, maybe psych psychopaths right. and terrorists. <laughs> I think I think that's what one thing that that separates them from the pack is that is I don't they're not thinking straight. Right. You know? Right. But for the most part, listen. Most people uh, want very. Similar things. I mean, which is which is they want uh, to be able to take care of themselves, mm -hmm. have a decent job, mm -hmm. or if they if they have work and they're retired, they mm -hmm. want to live their retirement in dignity. They want their children and grandchildren to have opportunity, mm -hmm. and people value their health. I think everyone will tell you, no matter what age they are, or what religion, or or their amount of wealth, mm -hmm. they're going to tell you that if they don't have their health. That's, uh, that's a real negative in their right. lives. So a lot more in common. And so it's not that difficult to, you know, f figure out what your, what your priority should be mm -hmm. and move forward. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the, was, the, was the challenge that you were looking forward to most approaching and, and taking on when you, when you got there? Well, any, you know, every, any new job is just trying to figure out, you know, uh, who the key players are True. and that True. kind of thing. But I and I've been in public office for a long time, mm -hmm. so really it didn't take me that long to try to figure out how to try to get a few things done. And within the dysfunction of Congress or the missed opportunities, there are still lots of opportunities to do a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. And so you want to try to find. And what I have found is we're on a bipartisan basis. I could get things done for my community. Mm -hmm. You know, I go, I went up there, and I still, I go every day. I have some core values that that really aren't going to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, want to secure, always keep Medicare and Social Security secure because this is what we uh, is important, really, f to keep our country s stable. Of course, people have earned their money, their benefits. That's a core value. Uh, protecting human rights and mm -hmm. women's reproductive rights, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Standing up for veterans. You know, those are some core uh, values that I have that I bring with me every single day. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't, I mean, I, I don't spend 100% of my time fighting f for that. You mm -hmm. know, most of the time what I have to do is, you know, join the fights to keep certain rights to be taken away. Gotcha. Uh, but my priorities and things I like to focus on are pretty much generated by my constituency. Mm -hmm. And so um, I keep my ear to the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, when I campaign and when I was elected, I, for example, well, be, I tell you, being a mayor gave me a real advantage mm -hmm. because mayors have to get things done and you're really more tuned to locally what people need. First thing I did when I got elected is I uh, went to every city I represent, mm -hmm. took a tour with either the mayor or the town manager. We went through the city. Some of them are small, like like uh, we'll say, or, or some of them are, are teeny, like for, uh, Lauderdale by the sea, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm, large, mm -hmm. like Fort Lauderdale or. Um, West Palm Beach, well I knew West Palm Beach very well, or let's say Plantation, which is big. Mm -hmm. You know, so I could hear firsthand what in the needs, and, and there were certain patterns that developed for this uh, district. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In fact, it's okay. <laughs> so you can come in, but just don't make a noise. <laughs> You can stay. It's not a big deal. Yeah. It's okay. I'm gonna beat that up a lot of today. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Really, it's, this is a very comfortable, yes. casual. Yeah. Don't worry. It's okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, one thing I found in Broward County, the top priority was trying to expand the port. Uh -huh. 
So I took that on really as a, as a top priority and I've been working on that. We've had a lot of success there. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a coastal district beach restoration, mm -hmm. so we spend a lot of time working with the Army Corps to mm -hmm. make sure uh, beaches stay full of sand. That's, yeah. It's much harder than you think I, to do that. I, I, we, well, I mean, it just seems like there's a story about that almost yes. every season. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's uh, a couple examples. Um, this issue of sober homes mm -hmm. in neighborhoods, which are these group homes that that uh, cater to the, uh, cater is probably not the right word, group homes of recovering alcoholics mm -hmm. and addicts mm -hmm. where there's been so, uh, quite a bit of exploitation. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a lot of that yes, down here, right. a lot of that. So that's, that is really a top issue for me right mm -hmm. now. Gotcha. And okay, so I know that you do listen to your constituents mm -hmm. a lot. One thing I, I was Kind of taking it back, not in a, in, a, in a very positive way, was um, after the Pope came and spoke to Congress, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I noticed that um, you were someone who then sat down with a ki bunch of kids mm -hmm. and, and talked to them about, about that visit and about mm -hmm. that whole time. And I thought that was really telling of who you are, mm -hmm. um, that you want to listen to a variety of perspectives mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. take something home with you. Yeah. What did you take home with you that day? Well, I will say that the Pope's visit, now look, I, I, I'm Jewish, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not Catholic, mm -hmm. but I thought his visit was remarkable. Mm -hmm. I think he is remarkable. And I think most of us, uh, and we do have a diversity of religions in the Congress, so I think we all were impressed by him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and felt honored that he was there. Mm -hmm. We had an opportunity to invite some of the students from the district. Some took our invitation, some didn't, but some of these students did come up uh, um, here and uh, up to Washington. And so I sat with them. I sat with them actually before they came to Washington and then after. Okay, interesting. And here is what this was my takeaway. I was in awe of, the, awe, awe of these students because these young kids really had a passion for humanity. Mm -hmm. They uh, wanted themselves to, you know, pay it forward. They're all living nice lives and they want to help others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, to see young people feel that way, uh, I thought was very inspiring. You know, it, it, it tell, it's very telling to what you were speaking of before about our universal truths that we all hold, mm -hmm. no matter where we come from. Yeah. And, and I actually just happened to see this meme come across Facebook yesterday that said something like, um, uh, a Jew, a Muslim, a Christian, an atheist, and a pagan walk into a coffee shop, dot, 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 mm -hmm. and sit down and have a cup of coffee and a great conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, it's, yeah. and, you know, that's true. We can right. all learn to get along when we focus on what brings us together right. or makes us the same. Right. Um, and, and with that, and I, I know this wasn't a question I had before, but it's I right. hope it's Don't okay. Worry. I can handle it. Okay. <laughs> because I have seen such a passion for LGBT rights. Mm -hmm. And I have, um, on the 33rd episode of uh, my podcast, I had a friend of mine who is mm -hmm. uh, transgender speak about his struggles and what the realities of all that is. And um, so I just was curious if you could speak upon why that has become such a passion oh. for you as well. Well, listen, I've always, I'll tell you what, ever since um, I remember, since I'm a kid, uh, I've always had a passion for justice. Mm -hmm. And it, I just was something, maybe I was just born that way. I'm trying to, I always try to figure out what is it about mm -hmm. it. Um, when I was a child, uh, I grew up. I grew up in the fifties when I was a young child in the fifties. Mm -hmm. There was a real stereotyping of, of boys and girls, mm -hmm. much more so than today. There still is, but back then, is the girls wore pink, the boys wore blue, the girls played with dolls. Mm -hmm. Really, that was it. Girls played with dolls, and boys got to play with mud and frogs, you know, frogs <laughs> and baseball and everything. I was an athlete. Yeah, I love sports. Yeah. I couldn't care less about dogs. I the same way. And I just like the baseball gloves and the baseball, and I was out in the street. Amen, and sister. Like, <laughs> and the, here's probably the day, I don't know, I got ridiculed for that. Yeah. I don't know whether you did. It's much, it was, you came from a different generation, but in my generation, I got ridiculed for that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, you know what, it's not that I didn't care. It was like, I was going to, 
I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wanted to because I, I was an athlete. And I remember going to my brother's baseball games and feeling really bad because they didn't have similar activities for the girl. I mean, you know, mm -hmm, it was one of those mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anyway, how do I relate that? I'm just, I don't know whether it was that or just it's something innate. Mm -hmm. But for me, I always stood up for the kid who was picked on. Mm -hmm. Uh, in those days, uh, I remember there was a young boy who was who was had a, uh, a mental disability, mm -hmm. and he would pick, picked on. I remember I always would walk him to school. I mm -hmm. mean, there was something in me. Uh, I, my when my brother was a little younger than me, the bullies if they picked on him, I was staying in the yard with the baseball bat. You so, go, girl. So that <laughs> something innate with yeah. innate with me, and so I uh, was. I mean, that's how you know, I went. I was a perfect subject for the 60s because mm -hmm. I got to stand up for every injustice you could think of. Right, really. right, right. I mean, I was in a lot of marches. You know? <laughs> the student rights, the black student rights, the, you know, the civil rights, the women's rights, mm -hmm, the Vietnam mm -hmm, War. Mm -hmm. I had that passion. Um, and so it just came very, very natural to me, to me um, in terms of, uh, you know, the L now it's LGBT, well, when I got into all this, it was gay. You know, that's what they, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's what they said. It was gay rights. That's mm -hmm. what it was. And I think it was in the state legislature when I really had my first opportunity to stand up and say, this is this not being fair. Mm -hmm. And what, what happened was back then, the, um, this, I think it was the state of Hawaii passed a law that allowed for same-sex marriage mm -hmm. and all of a sudden our state legislature decided that they would pass a law that said we won't recognize any anybody who got married in another state mm. that was the first political battle mm -hmm. that i remember getting involved with and it was a i just remember the ludicrous debate on the floor of the house um <laughs> I can and even back then the democrats because this was back in the i think in the 90s okay. you know the Republicans, they were, they were a lost cause. Even <laughs> Democrats were a lost cause in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. There were not that many of us. And it was, you know what? It was just really part, always just been part of my ethos, which is uh, people need to be treated fairly and mm -hmm. given uh, their right, rightful uh, you know, opportunity to reach their potential, regardless of mm -hmm. their race, their religion, their sexual preference, whatever, mm -hmm. it just fit in all for me. So it, I think it just was something innate that I've always felt. Passion for justice. That's how I would, that's how I would describe it. That's a beautiful message and passion. Mm -hmm. I just want to be curious and do a quick time check. How are we with time? Okay, we've got a few more minutes. A few more minutes? Okay. Um. <laughs> well, so, what you can do, Doug, is find out, have... We'll t I'll text Vanessa just to come in, oh, and then the other people are here. Okay. okay. Sure, sure. Oh, you got people outside that are coming? I'll t I can tell them I'll just text her. Okay. Okay, where are you? There she is. Whoops. Okay. So, um, I, th I think, and I can speak from, uh, in part, very personally, that mm -hmm. you've been a role model for me, um, and I think you are, and generally speaking, a role model for Floridians, for women, <laughs> really for the Jewish community, and I, no, I, you really are, uh -huh. um, whether you want to admit it or not, you, you are. Never, I never thought of that. I, I think you are. I think, um, well, so that my question is, do you recognize that, and, and how does it feel to hold that mantle. I mean, oh, I think you really are. Well, you're very kind. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really think about myself that way, but mm -hmm. I think the only thing, one thing I've, you know what, I've always tried to honor my parents. You mm -hmm. know what? What I never, my father's passed away. My mother, I'm blessed she's still with me, but I would never want to do anything in my life mm -hmm. that would uh, embarrass them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I try to live, <laughs> I really do try to live that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, not, so I, I don't try to, I stuff that I'm trying to be a role model now that you say that. Now, I try to just live a life where I can be, and I'm not a perfect person, you know, I'm, but I try to be honorable. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to be truthful and I try to be mm -hmm. 
honest. Mm -hmm. I think I am. Um, and that's how I try to live my life. Sometimes I'm too honest and I, I probably don't say things the best way I should, but... <laughs> but you're human. But that's my... That's right? My, that's my, that's my <laughs> that, like I said, that was, that's that what makes my, you so approachable. And right. <laughs> Sometimes I could be more diplomatic. <laughs> if you could wave a wand and say, I want this done in this next election cycle, oh. this next series of years in Congress, what would be your, your biggest... What would make you the proudest to see happen? Well, first of all, if I could wave a magic wand, I would elect a Hillary Clinton president. Okay. I'd like, first, I think she's the most qualified candidate, and I want to see a woman president in my life. Did you have a favorite moment in that debate the other night? Uh, I think when Bernie Sanders said, damn those in, I forget those Me names. too! That was my favorite moment, too! <laughs> he said what I was thinking. Uh, it's like enough is enough. <laughs> But if I could, if I could, you know, wave a magic wand, well, boy, oh boy, uh, well, obviously I'd have the Democrats taking over Congress, <laughs> and then we could maybe do a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many things yeah. that need to get done. You know, if I, what has to just from a technical level in Congress, we have to lift what's called lift what's this artificial cap on spending called the sequester. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a very good thing to do. Uh, the problem is, I'm not so sure that the Republicans would allow us to invest, do the kind of investments that we need to do. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, the investments that I think we need to make in this country, number one, is on children, especially poor children. They should, every child should have an opportunity for good pre-K education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, of course, I think that when their earliest brain development is happening, it, it means so much for them True. as they get older. And they, and no, ch no one should be hungry. Right. I was just going to say, and nutrition no, is such no, a big no part of that too. No one should be hungry too. in this country, and everyone should have access to health care. Mm -hmm. I, I believe those are really important foundations for people to live full lives. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I can add on. Obviously. Affordable college education, mm -hmm. I think, is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that the number one issue facing America today that threatens us, our security, is income equality. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is about, I'm not into the class bashing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is not about hating millionaires or billionaires. That's, I don't mm -hmm. think that's the point. Mm -hmm. I think it's about if, if people are able to, if, they, if someone puts in a hard day's work, they should be able to make enough money to take care of their family. Everyone, most people don't need a yacht. They don't even right, want a yacht. Right. They don't think about it. They want to have a decent life right. where they can put a roof over their head, you know, have food every day, have some enjoyment, you mm -hmm. know, whether go to the movies, or, uh, you know, uh, 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 save for college education mm -hmm. for their kids. I mean, this is about really a sort of, the American dream is really pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what is, right now in this country, it's hard to even to get those people, we're getting away from you, even those basic mm -hmm. minimums of the, of the American dream. Mm -hmm. And so the very wealthy are getting wealthier and the, and the middle class is going back, wages are stagnant, mm -hmm. and the poor are not able to get up to the breakthrough. Breakthrough. So. I, just, I, I, think, I think it's a combination uh, of strategies that we have to use, and I think this country, I mean, I'm very optimistic that we could if, if there's political will. And then, then the, the third thing, or I don't know, I've maybe said more than three things, <laughs> but I think the other really big issue that faces American politics today is the, the, the money and the super PACs, that I think needs, needs to change. Mm -hmm. I could, I, you know, I could go on and on and on, but that's I'll, I'll stop there. No, but those are some extremely yeah. important yeah. and and very lofty and huge uh -huh. concepts. But I agree with you sure that they have to. No, 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 you're fine. I I agree that 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 has to. Um, you know, it is it is very frustrating when you see people can't get their their basics mm -hmm. taken care mm -hmm. of. And as you were talking, I was thinking about the family that you know again doesn't think about a yacht, but uh -huh. wants that everyday normal normalcy, right. and mm -hmm. and then to not have to worry about 
if God forbid they get cancer or something, right. that that financial devastation as well. So right. I think um, everything that you're working toward is yeah. is is really really good, mm -hmm. and um, I I fail to see why people would fight you. So I I wish you the best <laughs> of luck. I know, I know, I fail to see the, the the logic of it, but I see. The <laughs> right. But but I wish yes, you the best right. of luck, and um, I think you're just going to keep doing wonderful things all for, right, well, thank for you. all of us. So thank and you, you so you, much. Good luck with what you're doing. Thank you so much. Okay, you're a young entrepreneur. Thank you. Right? I'm trying. I'm trying every day. That's terrific. <laughs> so thank you so much for your example and your passion and all the hard work that you okay. do for us. So all right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Let us know. Uh, we'll watch your... Is that th something you watch on the internet, I guess? Uh, well, yeah, you can listen to it. Um, um, I'll be sure to send Helen and Doug all the oh, yeah. links. Do you have, stuff. like, an iPod? Is that what it's for? Uh, usually it's, uh, yeah, usually people do it on their mobile phones, oh, or you can oh, also do it on online on, the on you know, a laptop or oh, whatever. Oh, I got it. So, okay. Yeah, so right, I'll be sure you, you, I have you an get iPad. it. Well, yeah, that's fine. That works, too. <laughs> that totally works, too. So, okay. so thank you so much. All right, much. thank you very much. Yay! Okay. Mind if we get a picture? No, let's do it. Okay. You want him to take it or you want to yeah. do a selfie? Oh, I love the selfies, but okay, if Yeah, he... we can do a selfie. That's fine. Okay. Right? We'll do what's it. good for you. I, I, I like selfies, too. Yay. Lovely meeting you. Awesome. Okay. Would you, would you have so time sweet. for a quick signature? Sure. I have a... Um, so cute. <laughs> I have a... Uh, my guest book is... Your guest book. <laughs> Once it's I full. Think, I think I should have your signature because I think you're going to be very important. Oh, today. you're so sweet. <laughs> I am so keeping that audio. <laughs> um, once this is full, I'm going to be, these are for, for you okay, or however. Okay. Um, what do you want me to say? It's, it's up to you. It's, it's a full page for yourself, but you can literally just sign it oh, or you okay, can write a message. Okay. It's completely up to you. To, okay. But yeah, once it's full, I'm going to auction it off for a, a charity I believe you're familiar uh, with, Little Smile. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so... Isn't that Virginia? That's her charity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, when I was mayor, I had a couple of... Uh... Now, is that how you spell your name, Jenny? Oh, it's, but I put Jenny. Is that wrong? It, it, Jemmy with M's. Oh, Jemmy. Mm -hmm, I got mm -hmm. it. I can, look at that, how I could do that. There you go. Mm -hmm. This is a quick fix. I, I, I had a couple of uh, employees at the city who had uh, young children who had leukemia. That's, so that's how I got involved mm -hmm. over there. I, mm -hmm. I went to Virginia's event a couple mm -hmm. times. Gotcha, okay. gotcha. Okay, they are here. They're here. Okay. Okay. That's good. Perfect time. Yay! Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you, I may have seemed calm, cool, and collected on the outside, but inside I'm spazzing out. I'm Why? so excited are to have met you. <laughs> oh my god. <gosh. laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey. Enjoy it. You don't okay. meet me you don't meet many members of the of the media like this. Like, I'm enjoy it. So <laughs> I was telling everybody I said I can't announce it yet, but you're so funny. <laughs> and okay. um, the first time we tried to schedule it, it was actually going to be right before my birthday. So, but this is actually like even better as an anniversary. So, it's thank so you so much. Right, well, you. Lovely meeting you. Good luck with everything. Okay. All right. And power on. <laughs> you stay in touch with us. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Did you? Oh, this is. These were my. Uh, this I always bring something back from my trips to the office. So. I, I got, these were all the pens they gave out at the, I was at the NATO assembly. So I read it, went around and I grabbed a pen. So this is just a, a little souvenir. Oh, okay. she'll give them out. Okay. <laughs> and the interns. Okay. Thank you, Lois Franco. Jimmy. <laughs> I'll, uh, Jimmy, I'll show you out. Okay, I'm just going to. Hey, Jimmy, just... you stay in touch. I'm going to have you come work for us one, one day. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> that would be a dream. Let me try to stop this. Right after Washington, Are you serious? <laughs> Maybe one day I would. I, I. Oh my gosh, you have no idea that you're. I'm blustering inside. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to. I can get my key or I'll get, would you, get locked out. Would you out. do a quick sign off? Would you have a second to do a quick sign off? Yeah, what does that mean? Just say, um, this is Lois Frankel with Curve the Cube. Okay. Curve the Cube. Okay, uh -huh. sure. This is Lois Frankel with Curve the Cube. Hey, thank you again. <laughs> Lovely meeting. I will definitely keep you in touch. To oh, you need it. Like okay, I'll hold the door. Oh my gosh, this was so great. You have successfully curved the cube.